I'm going to start again. Um, it's important. It's really important for me as a young woman from uh, who was raised by her grandmother. It's really important for me to acknowledge my elders. So that's why, you know, I was, I was, um, I need to do that. So thank you, uh, Casey and uh, Jody, who supports my nation and has for a long time. And I really appreciate that. Um, when we talk about solidarity, it's, it's actions like that, that um, living by it. So, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Dance. Otse o squatame, pehtegue, guo, squatame, with the. So, hello from the doorway in to the doorway out. And yeah, Crystal Layman. Amisk sage kan nehio, biagos kan, ustesimel, oyosiwiwin, nugotasik. I'm Crystal Layman, Beaver Lake Cree Nation, Treaty Number Six. Nata tamanan, yin yuak of this territory. I'm thankful for the original people of this territory. First of all, um, I want to acknowledge that we're here and we're here together looking beyond the confines of race, color, and creed. We're involved in a revolution, shifting and moving. This is a room full of change makers um, and it's the pieces of a perfect solidarity puzzle. So I just wanted to acknowledge that you know, everybody that came here and I think is here in general in New York, you know, and those that are back home too, you made the commitment uh, collectively. So, uh, thank you to all of you. So again, you know, I come here from Treaty 6 in what is also now known as Northeastern Alberta, ground zero of tar sands, where on May 20th, 2013, the first of four spills was discovered within the traditional hunting territory of the Beaver Lake Cree Nation and Treaty 6, a territory that is home to 50 First Nations, four spills that have killed over 200 birds, small animals and amphibians, and to date over one and a half million liters of bitumen emulsion has seeped to the surface and has been contaminating groundwater that we all depend on. And to date, 16 months after the discovery, the investigation continues whilst we continue to face issues surrounding this underground blowout, yet the government continues to approve re-steaming and extraction permits. And this isn't a pipeline spill, it's not containable and it's unstoppable. And there you have it, a small glimpse into ground zero of steam-assisted gravity drainage, SAG-D, tar sands destruction on our homelands where 84% of our traditional hunting territory has been leased out to big oil. And we did not consent. Thus, the Canadian government has not followed Canadian and international legal requirements to consult our nation, just as that has not been done here and everywhere else where our people are. And moreover, Canada has not achieved the minimum international standard of free prior and informed consent. Consultation, and more importantly, free prior and informed consent, which must be defined by us. Such processes must not be prescribed by the brass hands who are making willfully ignorant decisions with real life consequence. An article 32 of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples states that Indigenous peoples have the right to determine and develop priorities and strategies for the development or use of their lands or territories and other resources. Thus, it's crucial to raise the platform of the rights of Indigenous peoples under these states because in my homeland, beyond that invisible border, in that state we call Canada, we are facing a government that has completely dismantled environmental protections by way of Omnibus Bill C-38, shortening the time frame for environmental assessments with greater federal control. Bill C-38 was quickly followed by Omnibus Bill C-45, amounting to a First Nations land grab and the com complete erasure of virtually all legal protections of our surface freshwater systems. And this was followed by Bill S-8, which the federal government supposedly enacted to provide safe drinking water for the First Peoples of Canada. In reality, it will result in the privatization of our water, taking the milk of our mother 
and turning it into a commodity where our people would be forced to, to pay fees for clean water due to this government's attempt at trying to sell what was never theirs in the first place. And I fear that the stories of our old people skimming the top of the water and drinking are going to become just that, stories. Stories that my children and our future generations can only hear of and never experience. So here we are, economic hostages on our own, our own homelands, involved in a direct exploitation of natural resources. All over this Turtle Island, all over on a global level. And it's time to stand up and say, we will no longer allow industry and corporations by way of these governments to force us into submission by way of these legislative changes, making us beggars, hands out, whilst they covet our air and our water playing environmental roulette with our lives. These basic human rights do not belong to them. They cannot be owned because they do not belong to us. They belong to our one true mother, and it's a gift she's bestowed on us as living beings. And it's with those reminders that with a mere shrug of her shoulder, she will shake us from her and she'll go on living whilst we fall into the ashes of a climate war that we lost. And these projects are not only ecological and environmental risks, but they're also stupid risks, really stupid ideas. And many of us, well, I wasn't expecting that, but thanks. <laughs> So we must commit to consolidating our efforts and stand strong in the opposition of the agreements forged without our knowledge, participation and consent. And so to my First Nations relatives, I say this to you. We must take a collective, we must take, okay. I really don't like that. <laughs> um, you know, I think that's the hard part. A lot of the times, you know, we go into these spaces and we have real issues that we need to talk about because back home people are dying. We're dying of cancer. We're suffering from respiratory illnesses, but we're put in these spaces and told, you have such and such a time to talk about the lives that are being lost and the issues that you're dealing with. Um, and I just, I don't, want, I don't know why, that's the first time I've ever said that, but I just needed to say that. Sorry. <laughs> Let's not worry about the time issue. I think that's a really good point, Crystal, and we support you in this. And it is really hard to have the kind of events that we have and people's schedules. And how does that match up to real people's lives and real needs? So take the time that you need. And, you know, there is also the flow of life. So please just relax and do what you need. And let's not have beepers. I don't know where that beeper is coming from, but no more beepers. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, many of us are collectively standing together and demanding environmental justice with the aim of understanding that there is a need to address and reduce the disproportionate harm from environmental degradation that affects indigenous, low-income, and minority communities. People of color in frontline communities face environmental burdens from extreme resource extraction and exploitation. So we must begin to participate in processes designed by us to improve environmental health and safety. Indigenous peoples are exercising our rights and are standing up to protect the land, water, and our collective future, not only for ourselves, but for the very existence of the human race. And we are doing what we can to stop the exploitation and abuse of our Mother Earth. And again, we must commit to consolidating our efforts. And to my relatives, we must, take a we must take collective control of our natural resources based on the principles of people's participation, gender equality, environmental and social justice, self-reliant and sustainable management systems, whilst maintaining natural law and the assertion of our sovereignty over our lands and resources. And so the Beaver Lake Cree is doing that by way 
of a, litiga a litigation that's currently engaged in the a landmark constitutional treaty rights challenge based on Treaty 6 of 1876, which states that we have the inherent right to hunt, fish, and trap for all time as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the rivers flow. And the Beaver Lake Cree case represents a growing understanding that through Aboriginal title and inherent in treaty rights, the native rights-based strategic framework is the strongest legally binding strategy to stop the expansion of the tar sands at the source, including all of the associated pipeline infrastructure coming out of Alberta to bring this landlocked resource to market. Communities in entire countries are addressing the reliance on fossil fuels and investing in renewable energy. And it's not about the economy versus the environment. It has and always will be about the health and longevity of our Mother Earth. And we need to find change without perpetuating extreme resource extraction, which is perpetuating the impacts on our homelands and further assist assisting in this ticking climate bomb. So if you live here on what is known as Turtle Island or wherever it is that you come from, you have an obligation as a nation to remind your governments that they have due process that they must follow. Thus, they have a duty to consult with the First Nations people but to remind them that that does not include those systems of manufactured consent that have been created outside of our communities. This is an everyone movement. If you are living, breathing, walking, this fight belongs to you too. And the violence against women is the violence against our mother earth. And as a woman who grew up without a mother but was raised by her grandmother, I don't know what it feels like to have a mom. And I struggled with that growing up. And I had an uncle who came to me and said, Ntans, my daughter, as long as you have our one true mother, you will always have a mom. So I'm going to leave you with this. And it comes from the Lakota people. Honor those who came before us meeting the needs of the present generations, not compromising the future so that the coming generations are able to meet their own needs and guide our vision and renew each cycle of life. And that's important to me because I'm a mom. I have two small children. And finally, I had to say this because I knew I was sitting with Casey and knowing where she comes from and the long line of warriors. So I'm going to leave everyone with this. As an indigenous woman of Turtle Island, we are here and we are not going anywhere. Examaga, tatamanan, all my relations. <laughs>